let's have a chat uh, about the announcement. I'm going to go over some of the funny reactions because obviously it's broke people's brains that I'm coming back to do a major. So uh, just on a personal level, let's just uh, talk about it because I've essentially become everything I used to tease Vince about. Right? I've had all these stop starts, false starts. So a couple of things I've said uh, in the past, and let's get this out the way. Definitely said I've retired from events on two occasions, I think. And that kind of was the plan. Why come back for a major? Why, why do it at all? It's not that I don't enjoy the work. I do hate the community. <laughs> that's, not, that's not changing any time. Uh, uh, and, and when I say the community, obviously I don't mean you guys, and I don't mean good esports fans that contribute in a positive way i'm talking about the types of morons that have been attacking me over things i've never said for like 20 years those people i can do without and there's no quarter given um so let's start there i love the fact that i can take jobs like this when people like that say he's irrelevant he's irrelevant no one even wants to work with him he never gets job over. he says he gets offers the fact that i get to just piss in their face is too good i, I couldn't because obviously you know in 2021 me and Sylvie had like a you know like a long talk about how that event went and obviously we lit them up on by the numbers and it was it was fractious for a time you know it wasn't cool you know i, I think they felt you know, we were very harsh in our criticisms because we'd worked an event and, and, and it, you know, didn't, it was the big one. It was the first one back after COVID. So we all were, we were all invested in it being really good. And anyway, me and Sylvie, he's an OG, you know, we go back. And sometimes with the OGs, you're going to have disagreement. But if you're a real OG and you go back with your OGs, you can always fix that. Because you're OGs. It's like, look, it's just the game. It just is what it is. And so Sylvia and I sat down and we had a talk. And this is back this is back in 2021, you know. So it was like he said, Would you do Antwerp? And I was like, Absolutely <laughs> no, I'm cooked, bro. Like I'm done after Stockholm. Super stressful. Um, you've got great hosts, uh, you know, like Shocks and Freya can do the job. Stunners out there if you ever want to give him a go. Just, uh, you know, like, count me out. I'm, I'm old and tired, and, and it's tough. And then, anyway, he got back in touch. Uh, you know, they did Antwerp without me, obviously. And then he got back in touch saying, look, we're going to be having some events coming up. You know, we're going to be doing some majors in the future. And, you know, I've had time to reflect and think about the things you said and the criticisms that you gave us. And, you know, I want somebody that's invested in PGL being good as much as you are, right? And so I was like, okay, listen, fucking hard reset because we've entered a different era now. And this is obviously in 2021, to put it in context, I was even having talks about doing ESL Pro League, right? Uh, there was a big plan behind the scenes before the Saudis got bought up. And I talked to people at ESL, and ESL were like, listen, you did a great job in Stockholm. We'd love to get you in. This is right up your street. It's a summit, you know, beyond the summit, take TV style setup we're going for. And, you know, I'd love to see, you know, you're on a couch with fucking Yanko and Moses and all the boys all shooting this shit. And we even got as far as, like, really talking about things we wanted to do on the show and potential content and that kind of stuff. We would literally talking about it at Stockholm and then obviously I mean a lot of it probably drunk talk right but when the Saudi thing happened it just fucking cut me off so anyway with the Saudi stuff I I, I never got to realize that and I kind of felt like I'd got robbed from something because I knew I was never going to work those events and I do like working with some of these people you know I've known them a long time and it's nice to create cool things with your friends all of which is a long roundabout way to say that when Sylvie hit me up this time I was like well look it's not like I can ever work an ESL event Blast will never hire me because I'm uh, of what I said around the time of the Neom deal it's really PGL or bust for me I mean look I keep hearing rumors Starlad is going to come back and do some big CS events and obviously I've lit Starladder up for late payment to talent and things like that so um who knows I mean I'm in a very small corner you know, of, of in terms of events I can work. It's PGL and me, we, we, we squashed it. And uh, 
we had a talk and basically they were just like look let's hard reset we're gonna do it this way in terms of esports retirement i think listen i think at this point it's probably safe to say just ignore me when i say i'm retiring forever from esports like it's just me being sad or depressed and i will add obviously mental health has improved a lot this year but it's kind of like wrestlers and boxers right you miss it when you're not in it and you hate it when you're doing it right and it takes a lot out here and you know it's been a tough few years for me obviously people can see you know i haven't like looked after myself particularly well you know i've aged quite poorly i would say over the past three years it's been very hard a lot of drinking a lot of um self-medicating you know let's say you know it's took me up until this point to kind of get my mind right and start sort of caring about you know things that matter to normal people and you know getting my life in order like fucking you know like a normal functional adult should at my age and sort of not letting the the demons and uh the depression and the darkness kind of take over you and all the time that i've said that stuff like about retirement like just being real with everybody here and this will probably get clipped out of context and one of loba's fans will be like he's a mentally ill drug addict and he calls everyone mentally ill you know whatever it is by the way i've never Never shied away from talking about that stuff where I'm concerned. But just to, just for you guys, just so you know, it's like you know I was saying all of that when it's like I know I don't know what I was looking for, but I was look I was looking for something and I wasn't finding it in esports. It wasn't nourishing my soul. It was actually corrosive. You know, I was watching long term relationships fundamentally change because people were changing. And I didn't like it, and I was trying to extricate myself from content that was really stressful to create, like by the numbers and other stuff like that. And so it was, it, it, it's like every time I was like, yeah, I want to quit, or, you know, I, I'm out. I'm trying to force myself into like, you know, egg, the, oh, actually opening the door and stepping through. But um, it's actually clear that I, you know, for whatever reason, be it a good reason or a bad reason, I am brutally stuck in sunken cost fallacy mode. And no matter how hard I try to pivot out and do something else, I end up looking at this space and going, well, I could probably talk about that and improve it, right? Or I could draw attention to this, or someone really should plant the flag and say that's wrong, or and 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 you get seduced back into this thing because like esports has been my adult life as pathetic you know i even know it's kind of pathetic saying it out loud i'm sure there's you know the type of people who think 30 means you're dead which make up about 80 percent of the esports audience these days you know they probably say wow you didn't grow up you didn't do anything else you know you didn't you didn't get a real job you didn't do all of these things but it's 20 years of my life and you need to think about that you need to think about what 20 years of your life looks like when you stretch it out like what an immense expanse of time that actually is and all of the little moments that make up that time you know so i'm talking about you know meeting henry you know and meeting anders and all the events we work together and traveling around the world and and then, you know, meeting people, you know, doing events that you weren't expecting to do, like a Fortnite event and, and, and a Dota event and a Rocket League event. And then meeting all of the talent pool from there, do, meeting all of the FGC guys, taking them on TV, you know, what, like doing American television, meeting like Shaq and Charles Barkley, hanging out with like these famous people, Ernie Johnson. You know, it's all these moments, man, like just fucking and a million more, like the totality of all of that is insane. And sort of the idea of like, oh, I just walk away from it. And then all of those moments don't mean anything. Well, nah, you can't really do that, can you? That's not how it works. It's the totality of my adult life that I'm essentially, I, I constantly prick tease myself into thinking I'll walk away and I'll immediately step into something yeah. else and just go boom you know like and and um, do it uh, you know like and, and i'll do something else and it'll be as, as as significant and i'll have all those moments that's not really how it works you know it's kind of like life's 
Life's, you know, as Matthew McConaughey said in True Detective, life's only long enough to get good at one thing. So be careful what you get good at. And I got good at esports. And so, you know, there's no, there's no walking away. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a prison of my own success in a way. That sounds really arrogant. I'm suffering from success like DJ Khaled. What I mean is I've been successful in this business. And once you've attained some success in a business to walk away and start over is super scary. It's super hard, like, and, and not desirable to do. So, you know, it's a prison of winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you want to get out some days because that's what it feels like. It feels like a prison. And then other days it's awesome. And it's already been awesome, you know? I kept it secret from everyone I was doing the major. The only people who knew were Anders and Henry and PGL didn't tell anybody else even to the point where people were messaging going like i heard you doing the major there's all this talk about it rumors about you coming back and i was like no nah, not never me mate <laughs> never me <laughs> you know didn't even tell sam so you know i was actively lying to people anyway already like kind of like the reaction to it and you know having like scrawny message me and say can't wait to meet you in person for the first time and um you know fucking launders yeah we get to do an event you know i've never thrown to them as a host you know uh, and it sounds like a little silly thing and obviously i'd always said like harry and hugo you know we i hope we get to work uh, a fucking you know major together and all that stuff i made a big deal about them not being hired in stockholm and i've never worked with shocks and she's like an industry legend you know one of the greatest hosts we've ever had uh, i've never even done an event where we've had two hosts i quickly realized like yeah i actually kind of want this for the first time like usually take or leave events but whatever i actually want this but as i said i do want everybody to know that yes i am so petty which i think we've established from that what about today dickhead meme which is my most viral moment and my biggest 20 years of journalism is shit compared to the cultural impact of that one clip but i i am absolutely that petty that what tipped me over the edge was just reading the comments like oh richard lewis doesn't get invited to events like the point they stopped inviting me to events was the point I said I would never work for ESL while they're owned by the Saudis. Yeah, guess what? They don't call. They don't go up. What about old today, Richard? Self. Oh, hang on. Old, old dog, dog shit. shit. They don't call you up and go, change your mind yet? Change your mind yet? Particularly where I'm involved, because guess what? I don't fucking change my mind. Not on a lot of things, and certainly not on my principles. So, yeah, they, they, they don't call and they don't invite, but that's because of what I said about not working for them. And Blast, obviously, I mean, I've never said I wouldn't work with Blast. Don't think it's particularly great, some of the places they host the events, but I'm, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't object to it, but they absolutely don't want to work with me because of things I've said and things I've done, and that's fine, that's their choice. No, no hard feelings, it, it works for me. I've got plenty on my plate. So I wanted this one because, as we'll get to, I'll show you some of the reactions. It's just like this weird fucked up myth that like Richard Lewis is like irrelevant. Nobody wants to hire him. You know, all these like repeated lies and they and they'll come again after this event. Like the day the major ends, it'll be Richard Lewis is irrelevant again. Back to irrelevancy. No one wants to hire him. He's not going to. I heard all of this shit before I got hired by E-League. I remember people like saying, you know, like when I got announced for E-League, like, oh, he's not going to last, you know, like he couldn't work. He couldn't hack it in corporate America or whatever, you know, and obviously I left. They always say, oh, E-League fired him. It's like, no, I left. I even recommended my replacement on the way out. It wasn't acrimonious. I got offered a quarter of a million dollars a year salary and living in Las Vegas to go and work for a fucking hawker funded esports production event. Like, like, who says no to that? Why would I ever say no to that? You know, Turner said, well, we can't pay you that. Well, fine. So, you know, I'm living in a mansion in fucking Vegas, for fuck's sake, <laughs> like, on that kind of money. The narrative about me is always that, like, I don't know, people get bored of him. They don't want to hire him. He's difficult to work with. That's definitely never the case. In fact, I'm pretty confident now that maybe there's, like, maybe one or two names in the entirety of of the production field and broadcast talent that have worked with me that said like would say i was an asshole or a piece of shit or hard to work with or any of that stuff as you know it's like i've always said the show is what matters and so to the second point about why i wanted to come back yeah you know what and this is no disrespect to anybody out there this is no disrespect to any of the work anyone's doing 
but I feel like we've lost our way a little bit on analysis desk segments, and I feel that production doesn't give them enough care and attention. And I know we've got like really good analysts, and I want them to shine, and I want them to be like I know them to be. And we've got great hosts, and they ask the right questions. It's just... The way we do it is what I call static. It's like it's like a very static desk. So one of the things that we did when we were at E-League, and particularly when I brought Mo into the show, because that we needed an iconoclast and Thorin's visa was held up for a few weeks. So I said, well, get Mo. And everyone was like, you're mentally ill. Like, what are you doing? I said, he's never even done broadcast work, Richard. I said, he's perfect. He's a loudmouth with big opinions. Uh, he's intelligent and he knows the game get him he, and he knocked it out the park you know and obviously me and mo we talked a lot about it and we got gold out of mo on the desk but the key thing was we're set up to succeed because of how we did it which is we don't go point 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 graphic footage point 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 host throws the break it was the desk was alive we all we had was the time constraint and this is what i used to say i want to run a dynamic desk and that is that the production in my ear says you've got five minutes before break and what we do is we talk and we argue with each other if need be we talk over each other maybe you have to elbow you know your way into a conversation if you know someone's going at it or Thorin's making a point or Moe's like talking about that and because we did it that way that's when we got like the cooster clips and the things like that you know like I remember when Mo was talking about Cooster and how he let Team Liquid down and he was the big star and the big money signing I remember pushing the button under my desk and saying let him go and everybody shut the fuck up and then production because they were great at turner they zoomed in on cooster on stage and you could tell he could hear what mo was saying in the studio and that's fucking that is like as brutal a clip as that is that is great television that's great entertainment and i was like telling everybody like stop don't just let mo fucking pop off here he's gonna fucking cook this fool and he did and people were very divided on that clip and that segment but they talked about it they watched it and it was entertaining even if you engaged with it in a negative way i think what we've got at the moment and this is particularly on the esl shows i think there is this like stagnation where the conversations don't feel alive and i've talked about this a lot and that's what i'm hoping we can do obviously my analysts have to agree the other talent has to agree i'm not going to impose my way of doing things uh, on anyone but i mean i want to get back to that and I, and i and i think i'm vindicated a little bit with that idea because i always gravitated towards the us style of of the way they do their sports shows that it was just basically big personalities who played the game, who could articulate their opinions, really going back and forth with each other if they disagreed and creating this conflict. And the host really was just the timekeeper. That was that, That's when a host is at his best, when you don't talk, when you just set, you just throw the ball up in the air and the analyst comes along with the fucking steel bat and just fucking blow it's out the park that's when the desks are brilliant the american tv shows get that and in europe and particularly britain obviously we're very more reserved right it was match of the day and it's like you know you hi i'm gary lineker and i'm gonna take five minutes to not talk about brexit uh to talk about football joining me today is alan shearer a man that for some bizarre reason, didn't shave that weird little vagina triangle of pubic hair off his head for fucking 10 years. Also, top scorer for Newcastle. And here's fucking Danny Murphy for some reason. And then we go, it's like what we got here, Gary. If you look here, you can see the defence. They didn't defend. And you know why it's called defence? Because you have to defend. And that's why. And it's not like deep analysis. It's just surface level opinions. And it's fucking dull. It's dull. Like, I actually, you know, I don't... I. I won't watch Match of the Day live anymore because I, I, I want to scrub through those bits. Meanwhile, on Sky Sports, 
They fucking killed it because they got Gary Neville and they got Roy Keane and they got Jamie Carragher and they said, listen, your desks are fucking like the US ones. I want you to pop off. I want you to go crazy. I want you to argue. I want to bring in the Scouse Mancunian invective. I want Roy Keane to be grumpy and sour. And then we're going to pair him with Micah, this bubbly, enthusiastic player. And what started happening was everybody started watching the Sky Sports segments. They're like, fucking hell, this is great. And then they gave him a podcast. And then they gave him another podcast. And then they get... And, and so people are now tuning in to that stuff on YouTube. Just the analysis segments removed from the game, put on YouTube. And guess what that's like? That's like inside the NBA. Congratulations, British Broadcasting. Welcome to the fucking, you know, what the Americans have been doing since the 19 fucking 90s. So I do think esports could learn a lot from that. And I'm hoping that, you know, when we do this desk, the, the difference will be apparent that I am thinking about this in a creative way and I want to do different stuff. And I think, you know, the uh, unlike the changes made to the LCS, I don't want to just jettison analysis desks. I want to make them great again. <laughs> you know and we've got a we've got a great fucking team to do it i've never worked with pimp can you believe that never worked with him before and you know I, I don't mind saying this publicly and i don't think he would mind either obviously i've been critical of his his work because i, I think he's quite timid by comparison to the pimp i know i know the pimp is getting weird to call him pimp i know the jaguar i know right we've got to stop calling him pimp how have you still got that nickname in 2024 blood like tell me about it right like you know like i'm talking about some dude on a fucking street corner the jacob i know is like a bit he's really bold and forthright in his, his opinions he used to be a little shit house when he was a kid when he was a teenager and he used to compete in source and he used to love trash talk and getting in your face and obviously he grew out of that phase, but then he be, he's a very opinionated dude and very forthright. And if you read his tweets and you watch his stream, you see that. And then it's like on the desk, I just feel like he dials it down and I don't want it to be dialed down. I want you to fucking ramp it up. I want you to go psycho. I want the fucking desks to be like, you know, fucking hot take point made <laughs> where it's just... Kassad literally pulling his headset off like can't handle it while fucking Maui snakes that's that people watch that and they watch that for a reason and it's because fans are fundamentally liars they are they are the lady that doth protest too much fans love to larp as experts on the game when 99 percent of fans aren't obviously and so what they do is they say i love high level analysis and you shouldn't hire this guy because he doesn't have any game knowledge and remember famously when i was like distinguished master guardian or whatever on fucking cs and i was playing with like 100 ping from us with like anders vince and, and thorin on face it and i was like level four on face it people were like screenshotting this and like sending it to e-league and you gotta fire him he's just not credible <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a tv host like i ask questions so that that was a real thing that went on you know and so the fans think that game knowledge is this essential component to what it is that a host does and it's not and it listen i even think as Lorne has proved with his excellent casting at the geo guesser world cup i think even sometimes casters don't really need to know the game if they're just fucking hype right if they're just hype enough and can articulate the right sentence and capture the imagination in the right way so all of which is to say the fans don't want what they ask for they don't want the weatherman segments. They don't want the Mahone zone. They say they do. They pretend they do. They go on Reddit and they say they want it, but they don't want it. You know what they want? They want spice. I can even prove it. That clip of, um, I forget her name, Hedger and Blair having that like argument. Well, listen, I thought it was unprofessional. It was totally out of pocket. You know why? Because it wasn't fucking kayfabe. That's one of the most watched commentary clips of the year like i mean people fucking engaged with it weird creepy people sometimes but you know like i'll tell you this that's content and um i mean seriously it, if if that was done with total awareness from both parties that would have been fine but it wasn't it was actually a tantrum which is the problem with it 
So I hope we're going to create good viral moments. And not just frivolously, not just pathetically, because we're going to argue and bicker and try and spin. I just want us to have these compelling conversations that we have in the green room. <laughs> you know, like we all talk about CS and we get really into it. And we, we say things like, no, nah, they've totally fucking shit the bed and blah, blah, blah. You know, and, we get re and then we go on a desk and we go, yes, I couldn't agree more with that. <laughs> an excellent point sir and we suddenly like it was sipping tea you know it's like no fuck that man i got a couple of anxieties you know about the show i got a whole new fucking wardrobe that's the first thing because I, I realize that now when i stand next to these guys and the the, the fashion is like fucking you got to wear all these check suits and fucking waistcoats and all it's like wow you guys fucking you know you're fucking overdressed but it's like you know hopefully my tailor was uh correct about what is a la mode or i'm gonna look ridiculous uh the other anxiety the genuine anxiety is unfortunately one of safety obviously i've upset a lot of um fan bases i don't know if you've noticed and it's kind of uh, I'm running out. I'm running out of fan bases to annoy. The Brazilians will never forgive me uh, because I will never understand. I probably should uh, get hired by the US government because I've actually unified Russia and Ukraine in their hatred of me. Um, so I'm, it's hard to do these days, but I did it. And uh, obviously as well, the comments about Falcons and... The little stunt of turning them into the official t team of the LGBT community. Yeah, the message is not great on that one. Um, my Arabic's not what it should be, but uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to learn <laughs> the, the word for murder. Uh, I've seen it quite a bit. So I've upset a lot of people. And, you know, look, I've, I've been super lucky uh, at these events. I've had a ton of death threats. I've had people say they're going to shoot me. Uh, that they were going to sp specifically in Boston. They were going to they were going to uh, shoot me in the head while I was on stream. So it was going to be like I don't know, like a fucking movie. Like anyway, and that's <laughs> that's all for me in Boston. <laughs> you know, and it fucking JFK me. I've had people stalk me. I've had people hire private investigators to go after me. I've had a lot of fucking weird shit. And, um, you know, I've made it, uh, I've, I've, I've made it so far, obviously had a bodyguard at E-League who, uh, was a former CIA operative and Air Force veteran who was fucking hard as nails, might be the hardest man I've ever met in person. And I miss Chico. <laughs> I miss him so much. I uh, wish I had Chico coming to Denmark. But anyway, uh, I miss your brother. Um, he used to call me Big Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this is pet name for me he'd be like come on big sexy we're gonna get you to the green room anyway so i'm a little bit worried uh because i know fans want to meet up and um i'm super worried i'm gonna get attacked uh if i'm honest with you uh i never really talk about that because i just say, oh, don't give them the satisfaction of knowing that they make you afraid it only encourages them but um yeah very 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 nervous about that i've even warned uh people you know maybe maybe if we're having dinner and it's by a roadside Maybe don't sit next to me. <laughs> but I think we'll be all right in Denmark, hopefully. So, you know, it is what it is. If I get murked, I get murked. I mean, fuck it, man. So, yeah, that's kind of all of the thoughts, I think. Um, I'm hoping I can do a good job. Hoping I can bring a bit of spice back to the desk. I'm super pumped to work with uh, t the talent that we've got at the event. And I've even said as well, cause I'm, look, I also know there has been some how should we say internet beef between certain esports personalities and me due to things that have been said and listen i am extending a formal truce to those people i just want to have a good time i want us to all sit in the green room and not feel awkward so i want us to just roll back the years we're all friends again it's it's the before times before money and my virtue signaling tore us apart and then we can go back to shitting on each other after the event and, we, and i will but you know until then all still mates yeah it's the classic i'm invoking this is the all still mates accord that i'm invoking the all still mates accords of 2024 uh i invite you all to sign and uh 
yeah, we'll all we'll all have a good time. Really think it's going to be a good show. Production uh, are already on it. As I said, we're already planning the show. Also, one of the other things, this is the final thing I'll say, and this is just like a little bit of behind the scenes. I was mentioning this to the guys today. For the major, I want to compartmentalize narrative. So what, what I mean by that is I want to like stop doing this thing that we do where we talk about CSGO. Uh, it's over. It's Jova. It's gone. They don't even let you play it anymore, right? The, no servers for it. It's in the past, and it's time to move on. And I want, I want all of the analysis to be. It's CS2. We're talking about CS2. Here's what they did in CS2. Here's the stats from CS2. I don't want this apples to oranges comparison of they played this CS:GO tournament on MR15 and achieved this when we're playing CS2 on MR12. So what I want is ultimately for us to just there'll, there'll, there'll be a time to talk about history and there'll be a time to talk about legacy but when we're talking about teams and the upcoming games i want us to just talk about cs2 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 and i want it i want us to uh, focus on that i hope that we can sort of like you know just tie a knot in it a little bit about csgo because i really don't like this overlap i really don't like this bleed and it's happening a lot uh, on shows uh, where I think like, you know, let's just fucking, it's, you know, we've got this glorious fresh start. This is the first CS2 major, right? I've already oh, written my opening shit. for the show. It's going to be something about like how, you know, if it's a celebration, it would be like a wedding. We're marrying the new, you know, the, the game's rich 20 year history to this new installment of CS2 and beginning a new chapter of our happy lives together. You know, I do, I do actually work at my craft, you know, so hopefully I don't bungle it because I'll probably am a bit rusty. But anyway, so I'm hoping that, you know, I get I can get back in the saddle and do uh, do a good game, uh, do a good job, and, and we can all enjoy the games, and we can all fucking, you know, get the game off on the right foot, because it's CS2, and it's got a really bright future. Despite all the negativity, I've never been one to fall into that. I said I would give it up until the major to see where the development is, certainly still got problems from a competitive perspective on LAN. They are a lot less than they are online. And I'm looking forward to hopefully watching us create a new economy, Bidenomics, you might say, when we have the data from this major so we know what's going to work. And, you know, I want to be around to see us actually craft something new it sort of excites me a little bit you know i haven't done that for a long long time i was there when we came up with the rules for fucking counter-strike source i was there when we came up for the rules for tf2 i was there for all the arguments about fucking you know 6v6 8v8 all of this shit and i haven't done that for a long long time and i think we got an opportunity now so that's the preamble those are my thoughts about you know the glorious return of uh, richard lewis and i gotta say we're gonna we're gonna look at some reactions now I got drunk for nothing because <laughs> I was like, this is going to be totally insufferable. And apart from one melt on the official, well, no, two melts. One, I'm going to say for you speak your brains, there was an argument. A guy literally said the NIP team hadn't disbanded because there were still two people on the roster. And, and I said, no, they, they, they have disbanded. And then he said, get a fucking dictionary. And he typed it in all capitals. And so I linked him to the dictionary definition of disbanding, which is to end as a group. And then I said, have the group of players that represented NIP, has it changed since the RMR? Has it broken apart for some reason? And I was doing that yes or no thing. I've told you about this. When somebody is insane like that, and they're trying to argue, you know, black is white, up is down, something that's just psychotic in its premise, what you must always do is get the question that if they answer it truthfully and accurately, the delusion ends. And you just go yes or no. And just put that. You just do that. But unfortunately, he didn't want to answer the question. So that was weird. I mean, listen, he is a 21-year-old NIP fan. He's already lost. <laughs> He's already fucked up because he's only been supporting them for less than a year. Like, he looked at the pantheon of esports orgs and went, yeah, that one that keeps fucking scamming all their players and keeping sticker money and fucking used to have this great legacy and can't even qualify for majors these days and fucking hired that sex offender photographer. Yeah, that's... They're, they're picking them. 
<laughs> so he's already fucked up. Like, so, you know, you got to feel sorry for these people. Yeah, wasn't even around for the 87 and 0 era. Like, missed that. So it's sad. It's sad in a way. And then the other, the other melt is just uh, some guy on Discord. Uh, somebody linked the Jason Lake interview that I did. And uh, there was a guy on the Discord, like, just had, like, a fucking really visceral reaction and, and, and actually typed out, I can't watch that because of the person hosting it. And someone said, will you be watching the, you won't be watching the major then? And he said no. <laughs> that will be turned. He 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 admitted in conversation in a in a public setting that he gets such a fucking strong visceral reaction to hearing my voice or seeing my face that he ha he can't stand it. He can't control himself. Like he has to say, "Fuck Richard Lewis, he's terrible." And anyway, so I'm in that Discord, and every time a melt. The, every time a melt gets melty, I, I do react to it because you have to. There's a battle being fought, a battle for people's fucking minds. And that's where I sound like Alex Jones. There is a battle for fucking intelligence and IQ levels. And I'm out on the front lines every single day. And I don't want the morons to win. But there, there's so many of them and they come in waves. But we're, we're fighting the good fight. And I'm out there. I am a veteran of these things, right? And so, anyway, he then said, because he, when he realized I was on the Discord, um, he, he then said to me, you should, uh, you, should control, you, you, should, you should control your anger, otherwise it's going to consume you. I'm paraphrasing. So I pointed out, like, one of the things that sort of really bothers me is, I, I, I mean, I read a horrifying article the other day. It said 30 to 50% of people have no inner monologue. Like, what? What do you mean? It, it's not like, it, what? There's no voices? You're not driven by like an inner voice telling you what to do and where to go and what? It's just blank. You just sit there. Eee, like, what is happening? So I was horrified at that. And then I, I realized it's probably true because one of the things I encounter like quite commonly is people who they call you out for your behavior while doing the exact same thing and their brain doesn't register it. And you go, wow, that's like insane. Like Loba did it to me today, <laughs> which we're gonna get into. He's like, oh, Richard Lewis said he quit CS. He's a hypocrite. I'm like, you say CS2 is fucking shit blood and you stream it and you fucking beg TOs to be a co-streamer for the esports in that shit game. It's like, wow, he really does not, that part of his brain's not there, which wasn't a surprise in Loba's case, but certainly was a surprise in this Discord case. And this guy is still typing at me now on this Discord. I said, I've got to go stream, mate. And he's going, I'm, well, I'm getting the last word in. And I'm, I'm telling him, like, God, this isn't normal. You're clearly incapable of controlling your anger where I'm concerned. And he's still going now on Discord, still doing it. And now he's in my stream and he's going to go, see, I'm living in your head rent free. I don't know this guy's name. Just some loser on a Discord saying he's been playing CS since 1999 and yet acts like he's fucking 12. Uh, it's weird, man. But actually, overall, the response uh, has been pretty good. I'm amazed. I thought I was going to get lit up. I was like, I'm today's going to be shit. I hate talent announcement days in general. As a rule, I would get rid of them. I hate them. I think you should just tune in and, oh, it's them. <laughs> a nice little surprise for you. I wish we just did it like that. Or, oh, of course it's them. They always do that event. Yeah. No need to talk about it beforehand because all it really invites is, oh, I hate this person. And even the people who compliment you compliment you by insulting your friends. <laughs> That's like the wild thing. It's like Richard Lewis is a much better host than this guy. No, don't do that. I like that guy. <laughs> I like their work. Don't bring me into this. But that's just how the esports fan brain works, you know? Henry's really good, yeah, but, you know, I don't... No, stop. <laughs> just pay them the compliment. It's fine. So I fucking hate talent announcement day. So I got fucking smashed. And I was like, I'll just do it with a hangover. You know, if a day's going to suck anyway, you may as well have a fucking hangover for it. Fucking, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be shit. So it may as well be shit and you did something good with your evening. But you know what? It's nothing, really. No death threats. Can you believe it? <laughs> Not one today. I was like... Here they come. Not a single death threat today, guys. Not a single death threat. No one has told me to kill myself. This is fucking wild. I'm like, you know, surely the... It's crickets. I know, like mental. And check it out. I'll read you some, some positive fan mail. You know, I, I, I usually get like... You know, half a dozen pieces of fan mail, and uh, they're always the same. Like, you know, I'm fucking, 
Uh, I'm an old, you know, I'm, I'm an older p- uh, person in esports. I mean, you know, I've been been following esports for a long time. Love your content. It got me through some tough times. You know, I hate I hate the fucking job I work, but fortunately, I get to listen to you at work and you make the hours fly. It's like a typical thing that I get, and I love reading those. I fucking do. They make me feel like, yeah, fuck it. Every time someone tells me to get to the point or make a ten minute video, I don't do that because I know somewhere there's a guy on a factory assembly line with a fucking. They're not iPods now. He's just listening on his phone and he's listening to me. And that one hour video actually is an hour off the fucking soul crush of the shift job. So no, not 10 minutes, actually make them longer. Let's make eight hour long videos so your whole shift is covered, right? So anyway, uh, I wanted to thank you for all the videos and articles over the years. I was 13 when I started following esports in 2014. And for 10 years, uh, you've given me lots of moments to enjoy and have even helped me grow in ways I didn't realize. I've never been someone to interact with online communities outside of people I know in real life, but your content has uh, helped me and inspired me enough that I wanted to send you a message to let you know uh, you've <laughs> this phrasing with this one. Uh, you touched <laughs> me, who was a kid from, and then I won't say, it sounds dodgy when he doesn't mean that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, listen, mate, I'm sorry. I, I, I know what you mean. Like it's just you know, it's one of those, isn't it? Freight. It's fine. Anyway, from uh, across the globe, uh, your ability to stick to your moral code and to always analyze it and peruse it, no matter what, has helped me mold mold me into that kind of person. Sorry about sending you this and ranting, uh, but I just wanted to say thanks. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, apart from the phrasing, but you know, it's like, yeah, that was a nice message. Thanks, thanks for sending that. Don't ever apologize for sending me messages like that as everybody knows uh, i was watching <laughs> when i was drinking whiskey you can tell it's bad i watched that tucker carlson chris cuomo interview i was like two people i can't stand talking to each other for two hours right it's time and i'm just there watching it on my phone pissed out my mind um and uh tucker carlson said in it um he said listen he doesn't read anything on social media at all not a dm doesn't look at it never even used to get the ratings of his show when he was working at fox he says he doesn't want to give people emotional control over him and i was thinking you know he sort of makes a a good point but equally i always think of that was it julius caesar who um, he employed somebody to follow him around and just say remember you are only a man remember you are only a man I kind of feel that like you have to engage with the the comments and what you have to do is you have to fucking because it keeps you grounded it keeps you based you know you you know when somebody you know when a comment is a fugazi and they're just saying things to try and hurt your feelings and you go listen life's fucking shit all over me already blood like you're late to the party on that one you're not gonna fucking hurt me in any way that hasn't already happened so you know you can be zen about it but you know when it's true and it, it stings a little bit. You know, I think you, I, I, I think you have to, um, you know, you have to engage with the comments. And so I do. I read them all. I read them all religiously. And I read them all religiously today. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I've always said this. If you go away uh, for long enough, they miss you. It's like if you were being held prisoner and the prison warden came in and kicked you in the balls... 9 a.m. prompt every morning like a full volley to the balls and they did this for years and then they just stopped and didn't come in and do it anymore you'd be like fucking oh where's he at it's time for my ball kicking isn't it like, you would actually miss it in the end and so it's kind of like that i think if you go away for long enough people people actually mi- do end up missing you and they they think it's good when you come back irrespective <laughs> of what they've said in the past uh, yeah and they do call that theory pavlov's balls actually you can you can i'm gonna trademark that one so let's <laughs> we'll start with this hey say what you will about hltv they know how to get clicks don't they they know how to get clicks the headline richard lewis returns and then they use that one photo they've got of me on the database where you can see i'm struggling to button up my jacket because i've just had chicken and waffles for breakfast for the 10th time in a row and it says do not enter yeah but i i can i can go wherever i want because i ran that shit so anyway <laughs> they know they know they're gonna get tons of clicks they put richard lewis in there richard lewis announces cs2 will he be wrong richard lewis back in the game and they're all in there so i was expecting this to be like vitriolic you know but it, it it's not by hltv standards i was pleasantly surprised they even worked in a little paragraph a little dig usual hosts freya and stunner uh will not take part 
and shocks will be returning to the desk role she had at pgl oh, i'll just talk about this listen i am not getting involved <laughs> with any of this shit ever again stamping my feet and saying who should and shouldn't be hired and obviously there's some people i, I kind of would have liked to have been there i think we could have maybe gone a bit more on the analysts i'm not going to become a total fake or a phony with it but i've stuck my neck out a bunch for people and sometimes they've just gone like fuck you but i will say this i i sort of i didn't know who was getting hired one of the one of the things i said up front <laughs> i said i don't want to know i'll do it don't tell me anybody else I want to know when it's announced. I don't want to know who's working the event. I'm saying yes, but I don't want to think about the politics of that or anything. So anyway, when I heard Freya wasn't there, like, I messaged Freya and I said, like, oh, I'm sorry if it looks like an old fart has sort of come back from the dead just to fucking snake you out of a major appearance. <laughs> please, 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 if you do come to the event, let me buy you a drink. And uh, the good news is she's been hired by HLTV uh, to do media work while she's out there. So we are going to get that drink and we are going to be able to hang out. And Freya's great. Uh, loved working with her in, in, in Stockholm. And I think she's amazing uh, at a craft. And, you know, if there was room, obviously, you know, she she's a shoe in for any type of work uh but she was super gracious well she just said look it's, it's event work one person gets hired another one doesn't <laughs> it's like yep sorry <laughs> it's it's me i promise i'll fuck off for real next time <laughs> yeah i'm back sorry all right well at least you don't that's that, that's surely the next time he, he will stay fucked off but no he keeps he keeps coming back doesn't he? so anyway i just want to say that because you know look i i am conscious of uh, of this type of stuff you know and um it's it's one of those things and as i said there there are people on here as nip put it we're gonna have good vibes i've got a good feel about this this is a this is a drama free collective <laughs> This is a drama-free collective. We're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get through this major this time without any instances. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be vibes. You can call it vibes. And also, of course, it is worth pointing out. Uh, it's not on here because uh, he was in the observers thing. I haven't seen Sam in a long time, and obviously, it was like I kind of wanted it to be a surprise that I was like working the event because I knew he did the RMRs. And it's kind of weird because it's just like, you know, we're just, we're just getting, we're just doing our thing and we're in our own little world. Uh, but obviously, oh, oh, Sam a lot. He's a, he's a huge part of the community and, you know, means a lot to me as a person. So it's, you know, we get to hang out and work. I'm like, yeah, okay, fuck yeah. That's great. One of the comments, it might be on here, said, um, fat bigot Richard Lewis hired lol. Even got his disabled son Sam a job. <laughs> I'm like, why is Sam catching strays on this motherfucker? Like, what's he ever done? So hopefully, hopefully, I'll, I'll, hopefully we'll get to that one. I was just like, wow, that's fucking ridiculous. That one. Like, and me and Sam aren't related. So I want to make that abundantly clear. The the rumors of the Richard Lewis esports love children. You can't have it both ways. Am I a prolific lover fathering esports children, or am I an incel? You've got to pick a lane, guys. You've got to pick a lane. Anyway, why though? Right. We, we start. I was like, here we go. Why though? PGL. CEO of meds there. Uh, respect the goat. Immediate respect the goat. This is a, t a tweet that says that was fast. And this is th some dude plugging his own Twitter. And he said, we need to hire new talent. <laughs> the desk's boring. We need to hire new talent. And then he went, see, they're learning. So I, I ain't new, bro. <laughs> like, I've been, um, I'm the opposite than you. I'm what they call old. I'm old school. Uh, it's good that they mix it up. PGL boosting their diversity, equity, and inclusion numbers by hiring the CEO of the Rainbow Brigade. He doesn't even play or watch the games. I doubt he can name the full Amcal roster if his life depended on it. And you know what? You have, you've got me there. I could have prepared and just had the answer ready, but you know what? I'll get it right on the desk. That's what matters. Yeah, so, so, so there you go, right? I'm just telling you, yeah, exactly. It, it's that one with Nickelback's in it. It's Forrester in it. And then, it doesn't matter. I won't need, I, 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 I'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Crad, he's in it. There you go, I've done it. Perfect. <clears throat> so anyway, I just love that though. I'm the CEO of the Rainbow Brigade. I love the fact that it's like, it's just some sort of like casual fact. And I only ever said like, yeah, I'm, I'm by, you know, I've double dipped. I only, I only ever said that 
Uh, well, one, because I was hoping it would make me bulletproof from all online criticism, like it seems to do for everybody else. Wrong. It didn't work there, okay. But no, I just thought it was important to, like, be honest about who you are and if other people are sort of wrestling or do I want to, do I want to fucking say this do I, you know it's like guys it's really like no matter how it's framed it's really regressive if anybody cares like by the way this is why i'm an absolute centrist uh, based enlightened centrist on the whole sexuality issue i, I want to normalize it and therefore people who would criminalize it they're very bad and i will criticize them i think that's evil uh, i'll also point out if it's all the fuck you want to talk about and you want to beat people over the head with it and demand some sort of respect or fealty to who you are based on this one trait of your identity i think that kind of fucking sucks too and it really makes what one of the things that and I, again i can say this because i'm privy to these conversations when i've talked to people who've like you know been struggling with sort of coming out and stuff like that they actually say what that one of the things that really worries them is their friends will immediately think they're like the insufferable people online all of a sudden and get really couched and scared about what to say it's not like they think their parents will disown them often their family members aren't the problem it's the friends group they don't want it to change dynamically and that happens like way more than people would ever believe and that's why i just go look listen i like both <laughs> right i'm like a fat bald prince over in right and that's fine and it's just it's just there and then we just don't have to ever talk about it do we it's just a fact but i do like this idea that i've been bumped up i've now become <laughs> the ceo of the rainbow flag like i am i'm the ceo of all of gaydom gaydom bydom that's by <laughs> bydomnomics is what i'm calling it the fucking, the king of the fanboys, like, it, it, but, well, I would say bow before me, but, you know, people might get the fucking wrong idea. Hey, what, a, what a weird, <laughs> what a weird thing to say. I never, I, I can't believe that. I'm the CEO of the fucking rainbow. Like, I'm an actual diversity hire. That's what this guy is saying. I wish somebody had said that when Jonas fucking Gunderson was lighting me up, dude. It's like, why couldn't I have been a diversity hire in fucking 2021? I was a straight white male then. Why couldn't I be a diversity hire then? It would have been perfect. It would have been the fucking Uno reverse card I needed. Like, Anyway, I could call Richard a bad journalist and bad analyst, but instead uh, I'm going to say he's an annoying man-child. So, I mean, listen, some of those things are true. <laughs> <laughs> Tick that one off you bingo You knew Manchild was coming I think it's great I've always said it would be my wrestler night We were never getting through this stream Without the word Manchild being thrown around Pretty uh, pretty liber liberally Back to uh, back to this Redditors in shambles They they Some of them were Not as many as I would have liked People saying you know No Freya Sad about that Where's Torrin and Scoots uh, That's a nostalgia People talk about Scoots for a while it's a W, even though he has half of Twitter blocked. So tick that one off your bingo cards. Pog, this is why PGL is far, far better than any other tournament organizer. Look at all these plus ones. Yeah. Look at all these pl multiple plus ones. Now remove Pimp and add Thorin. Don't do that. Again, you don't have to do that. You could have just said it would have been cool if Thorin was there and we had the old band back together again. But loads of plus ones for that. It's a bit rough. Not very nice to Jacob. We're going we're gonna to do great work at this event. Another big reason added to watch the major and not just the games themselves. Goat, Richard Lewis the Goat. There is a Darth Vader-esque, no, that, that's fine. I expected more of that, honestly. Hell yeah, based, wasted spot. Richard Lewis being back is spicy. Time for muted desk segments, it's fair, fair enough. Uh, big W getting Richard. Uh, I don't often comment, but this deserves a big let's fucking go. RL's the Goat, the Goat is back. Don't get me wrong, I like RL as an analyst, but it's interesting how he's been glazing Valve so heavily since CS2 released. Like doing tricks on it, I think the it is... I think Valve is a, a man in this analogy, and the it is Valve's penis, I think. Um, so I'm doing tricks on the penis. And now he's hired to do the first major lol. Right, so couple of things on this one because I, I do I, I did expect this conspiracy theory remember valve have nothing to do with the hiring for the major i'm sure they'd put their foot down if they really didn't like someone like if i'd done something really nasty uh, they would say no no to me i'm sure they'd veto it they are active in the hiring for ti because they are active in the production for ti 
that's their event. They outsource the majors and therefore hiring decisions are made by the companies that run the major. It's very much a PGL decision. Secondly, this idea that I am, what was it, sorry? I, I am glazing Valve and doing, like doing tricks on it. Uh, the idea I'm doing tricks on Valve's penis uh, when I not only wrote an article saying, thank you, Valve, but also kind of fuck you. <laughs> that, that was the title of the article. And not and and the sentiment was you basically ran CS:GO as one big experiment, and you let loads of terrible shit happen and never intervened, and now it's all Saudi controlled. Thanks, <laughs> right? So I did that, and then for my Gonzo Awards, which we brought back, uh, which are the for those who don't know the alternative esports awards, where I sort of say this was all shit, wasn't it? I gave the entire life cycle the Riot Games Award for good game design. <laughs> That's ironic, the, the award. And wrote like 1,200 words about how CS2 isn't as bad as what people say, but it does have a ton of problems. So, uh, I don't know. Don't really think I am doing tricks on any penises here, but fair enough. There's an argument about uh, Zuma talk, and somebody explains it to a boomer uh, what it is. Big W, uh, the goat is back. Long live the goat. We've got variety on a desk. Goat, whack. Uh, let's hope he won't screw it up. Clown Fiesta, Pog Richard. Imagine complaining about the major and then going into the broadcast team for the major. You're a fucking rodent, Richard Lewis. I will never attend the official PGL broadcaster from Neon Reaper. Now, I don't think... Did I criticize this major? <laughs> did I ever do that? I don't know. I mean, maybe. Um, I don't recall doing it, um, but uh, it's fine. Good for Rich. Really happy to see him back in the desk for what I assume is a last hurrah. <laughs> Wait till I try and work my way into hosting a PGL Dota event. That'll be for... Oh, I kind of want that so bad. Don't tell anyone, right? Like, but listen, they announced like 10 events or some shit. And I'm like, just give me one. Just give me one to host it. Just want to do it. Just want to do it. I only, I've only i hosted a Dota event before, but it was only kind of a small one. And it didn't blow up on Reddit. People didn't lose their minds. We keep bringing up the load. I think, Could, can we? Please, PGL. That's what I want. I'll give you a discount on this if you hire me for the... Dota event. We'll talk. So anyway, uh, it maybe it won't be a last hurrah. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Certain I remember Richard saying he's retired from hosting. We'll never do it again after the last PGL. That's fine, though. People should be allowed to change their mind. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Not held to one thing they claimed years ago. I think he's a good host. I, I like I like you, pencil head. And maybe even son of pencil head. Uh, you seem to have your pencil head screwed on the right way. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Richard Lewis Hate is in shambles. The goat is back. The only S tier desk host in CS. I think that's a bit unfair uh, to everybody else. So I appreciate again. You don't have to insult people. If you play me. Right? Uh, holy smokes. I don't like how much in your face RL is, especially because some of the things he says are non sensical i'm talking nonsense but he does elevate the industry and is far more reasonable and moderate when doing uh events nice men's the valve gluck gluck has paid off i think gluck gluck is the noise you make when you're performing fellatio um, again i'm not I'm not up with all of the new terms it's uh what, what they call it, an onomatopoeia based pgl now get the ginger man in there back from the dead no way, bro, the GOAT. Huge W by PGL. Now we get Thorin uh, back. Meltdown incoming. It didn't come. The meltdown didn't come. Catch Ranaresh. It just didn't come, man. The GOAT host is back. Reddit is in shambles. Uh, no way. Based. Like, what? This is, like, overwhelmingly positive, guys. Like, I'm fucking, like, <laughs> I'm in bizarro world right now. Fuck yeah, RL. It's feeling like a major now. Return of the GOAT. Uh, and then someone replied with, I only see a GOAT. First hour, half hour of the broadcast will be Richard laughing at Astralis. You actually don't know how right you are. I want to start the show, hopefully, by having a segment about absent friends. <laughs> and talk about all the people who aren't at the first CS2 major. So I've already, I've already, I've already floated that. <laughs> to production <laughs> that was like the first thing i typed right i'm in the whatsapp group and do we get to shit on astralis right at the start of the show uh that would just i'm not saying we have to uh but i thought it would be nice you know like 
set the table. New gang, new generation. Loads of first-time major competitors there. It's an almost unprecedented amount. It might even be a record. I haven't checked the numbers. But, you know, pretty good. Anyway, L Talent. Holy shit. Uh, not a fan, but he's a pretty great host, to be fair. And then that person who said L Talent... They're insult they're, they weren't insulting me. They were saying maniac is mid. <laughs> Just like a fucking insane opinion. Unhirable, by the way. Zoom is crying right now. This guy posted a similar comment somewhere else in an, probably in another thread. I think he said he said in another thread he would rather die listening to mumble rappers than listen to me do a desk segment. It's quite strong. He misses out the death part here. He said, uh, good, that means I'll have more time for myself during the breaks. I'd rather listen to all of those Lil rappers instead of him. At least Oren isn't back. PGL, multiple Ws. Goated. Avid Counter-Strike specialists. Is he good or not? Very. Very good. Absolute W. RL. Laughing my ass off. I'm guessing that's about who's bad, but I mean, again, it's fine laugh no god please no 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 somebody here like talent so why'd you call commentators and analysts with such a weird word uh speech speech uh, i'll answer that for you it's just a holdover from the entertainment industry uh used to be a term that they used to describe like uh, the 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 film stars that used to be uh hired by the studios used to be contracted to the studios to make x amount of films and so to make the distinction between production and other elements of the studio you would call what goes on camera you, they would be called the talent and it's kind of like it was a little in reference and knowing wink and it's just one of those things that's just bled out and it's just it's just a standard uh industry uh industry term so yeah i'm thinking based i uh, won't touch that one isn't he dead uh again i think this i think obviously russia their flow of information not famously <laughs> unrestricted let's say think he thinks i'm the richard lewis that did die recently i'm not i'm the other guy i'm the other richard lewis uh so no not dead uh, was a, there was a strong uptake for isn't richard lewis dead though uh after, after this announcement so fair enough big orgs didn't qualify rl's on this it is a tier three event confirmed big if true uh this is low-key cool even though i'm not a fan uh richard lewis is a host again will be awesome now get Loba to collab with him. That would break the internet, wouldn't it? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's sort of capable of kayfabe. The constant Valve boot licking paid off. Hats off, Richard. Keep making videos about imaginary cheaters. RL is washed up. Well, yeah. Keeps getting hired. He keeps getting away with it, though, doesn't he? Uh, I don't even think Richard cares that much about getting CS work. He just wanted to prove the haters wrong. This guy, Gino, is in my fucking mind. Like, Gino. Oh, it's in my brain right now. I don't even think Richard cares that much about getting CS work. He just wanted to prove the haters wrong. He constantly has telling has people telling him he's washed up. Case in point, the, the literal preceding comments, and no one will hire him uh, as he casually books the biggest CS event of the year, where multiple household names got snubbed to have him there. Goat. It is. It is. It is pretty gangster, isn't it? You gotta. You gotta. You gotta give it to me. You do have to hand it to me. You ace this one. You, know. you can call me a you know fat, bald, old dog shit during the event. But, for, you know, just let me have today, yeah? Richard and Sam work in a major in 2024. Who would have thought? Legends. Who will he fist fight now and professionally? This is Spixel GG. If you're not familiar with him, he's actually appeared on the stream before. He is one of the common posters in Vax Sucks. I think actually his main Reddit account might have got banned. And he might be one of the many... Fro but he, anyway, he's a he's a Vax Sucks truther guy. Uh, just in case you weren't aware of, of that. Uh, you know, you have to you have to remember the names of the true crazy. And anyway, look, it's just these are just all positive. What about your retirement today, dickhead? Can't wait to see you back at the desk. Uh, we are doomed. Uh, it's a bit extreme. Um, time to buy bot accounts to spread anti-Lewis propaganda on the major stream. That was uh, from a Brazilian flag there. I really like his content. He's so funny. Return of the man-child. Actually, that's fucking great. Return of the man-child. I'm fucking... Uh, that, that is... I might get a t-shirt made up. So thank you, PGL. Old guys club back in the game. We just need the Vincels to rise up, and we're having a good time. RL's back in the game, based as fuck, legend. I, like, look at it all. It's just, like, 90% positive on HLTV. Like, how how did this happen? Like, how? I'm 
stunned. There was like a few other threads made about it, obviously. Rickard is back. It's a thread just talking about Thorin, <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, someone calls it caddead.org. Uh, they, they hold on to that rivalry still over there. Rich Thorin and Scoots would be good. Uh, but not too hyped for the event. The GOAT is back. I understand why people hate him. I love how these guys supposedly didn't want to do events, but jump at the first opportunity when being invited. Again, I've had offers. I don't know how to keep saying it, but, you know, you'd, I knock them back. Uh, so that was that was fine. There was no vitriolic hatred there either, I think, uh, as well. I think, where was, yeah, there was... Like, like just a wave of positivity about me today it was like fucking so weird to see it uh there was another one that was like uh where is it where's the it was like a thread just return another return of the goat or whatever we don't we don't need to fucking glaze and do tricks on myself i guess a guy called meds again he, he just had to he just had to give it to me like they, they just got to give it to me jason lake with rl second win in a day for richard lewis very rare to say even the haters even the haters are in talking about my my content and liking it then there was this i was like oh the, here we go here we go the hate is starting now the, the hate's coming because there was a thread called richard lewis uh, versus overdrive and you can see here this time they were on my side uh, i still randomly laugh at the time overdrive was mocking richard lewis's accent but richard lewis thought he was autistic and was about to write an apology uh, there are too many funny moments with rl over so many years uh, I randomly go about my life, and one of them always finds a way in my head, and I just smile. He really is a gift to the scene. Exact same thing here. The man's content is absolute gold. Look at that. We're winning. We're winning. <laughs> We're winning. We're winning hearts and minds by making my... All I had to do the entire time was make anti-esports content. That was the fucking secret sauce. Why didn't I fucking do it sooner? I thought all the things I'm saying. Why did why why didn't I do it sooner? Then nobody replied. It didn't it didn't blow up this one. Sadly, I, I really wanted it to. Ah, oh, Lewis is cooking. You know it's good. You know it's good if uh, the kids say you're cooking. Right, cooking means you're you know you're good at cooking. You're making you're making cool things that people like. Interview with Taz and his coaching philosophy. E.G. files with the Four Horsemen. RMR reviews with Astralis and Nip. Major desk coast job locked in for PGL Copenhagen. Interview with Jason Lake about recent call buyout and RMR success. All of this in just one week. Yeah, I've been been fucking been killing it lately. Things are good. Healthy mind, healthy body, energized. There was this comment which sort of stood out in its uh, ridiculousness, and then we can sort of like move on they gave a job to a match fixer now they are giving a job to a xenophobic this is crazy valve needs to do something about event organizers <laughs> and then someone replied with this major is obviously letting anyone in just look how many brazilian bums are playing so fully wrecked i didn't even have to do the wrecking just fully wrecked <laughs> fine just another day you got it you've got to be careful posting on hl tv because a lot of the posts are just idiots but there are people capable of wrecking you, and they just lurk and lurk, and they see their opportunity, and they move in, and you just get wrecked out of nowhere. Then I got two threads about me on Reddit, which I was kind of, like, worried about, because, obviously, for some reason, talent announcement and my announcement ended up getting two separate threads, and everything talked about... Uh, was pretty much just the the matter of Richard Lewis, really. And it was just like, I don't know, probably don't need two threads. Uh, this was the talent announcement. I'm trying to think, again, there was just no hate, spicy hatred. I was like, kind of, I got to say, I got to say, I'm, am I so sick in the head? Yeah, I, I am. I was actually disappointed. I was, I was like, oh, I wanted the haters to be in shambles. That's what I wanted, right? And instead, I got... Hardly any haters, barely any shambles. <laughs> like, oh, come on, give me, you know. I mean, there's always going to be a few, but I wanted all of it. This is interesting, you know, he lit them up about Stockholm and how did they negotiate it, and they even tried to get him to do uh, Antwerp, and uh, the guy is a role model professional. Say what you want about his Twitter or content, but he knows how to run a show. It's no coincidence they hired him for E-League. He knows how to choke a bitch too, which is just, and then that was a hate comment, and that got removed, you Kinda. The mods are working for me now. I'm back. Michael Jordan, always a good comparison. 
uh, entered the Counter-Strike esports scene late. I never had a chance to see Rich Lewis as a host. I do watch a lot of his content, and it's miles above others in esports and out within and outside of Counter-Strike. So I'm looking forward to see how he would be on the desk. And he's one of the best to ever do it. E-League is up there as my personal golden age of CS content. And honestly, there's a good chance it won't ever be beaten. Thanks, Richard Lewis, for the content and the memories. The love is overwhelming. What's happening? Reddit told me Richard Lewis is irrelevant. This is one of my burners, obviously. Reddit told me Richard Lewis is irrelevant and could never work an event again, even if he wanted to. A single tear. Lots of hell in the cell talk. Somebody says you are fighting demons that don't exist. And then I literally just Google search Richard Lewis irrelevant. <laughs> you, you, you asked, obviously. Again, that, that's me on a burner, quite clearly. Uh, RL is fire. I'm fire. I'm straight fire. Peter Gammons. We got a, we got a football the nerd slayer. a football manager fan in there. Didn't RL say we'd exit the scene? Why is he still taking up gigs? Just wanted the haters to be in shambles, really. Um, I, I won't lie to you. RL's back, back, back in the major circle. Great host. Haters in shambles from exposing cretins. This. Uh, let me tell you a story about this Reddit account. Right? Uh, it's fucking mental. This is this is how wild life can be sometimes. Exposing cretins uh, hated me at some point in their posting history, and they made this account uh, because I. I had burners that had names like, I don't know, like fucking Reddit mods are cunts. Well, fucking, I don't know. Just stupid burner names. Because this was back when I would, was making the, the burners. It wasn't that I was trying to hide that it was me on the burner. It wasn't like that. It wasn't I wanted a secret burner. It was more like, if I ever make an account, that's obviously me. The Reddit staff would just ban me. Like, here's a, here's the thing. I got asked to do an AMA for a subreddit i won't say which one but i got asked to do an ama recently for a subreddit and i said you better run that up the chain of command because i am probably the only person in the world who isn't allowed to have any presence on reddit whatsoever and uh they said what from that ban <laughs> fucking 12 years ago <laughs> the fuck it is i'm like oh yeah try it anyway they tried it and uh they said yeah actually it's insane <laughs> They just said, no, <laughs> you can't even do an AMA with us posting for you. Uh, so, yeah, you're just you're just dead. You, you, you can never have a Reddit account. You can, you can never do an AMA. So it's like, it's kind of wild. Like, I, 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 I wish they had um, legally complied, complied with the fucking... I put in a subject access request, and then I did a GDPR request. And as I've said many times, I'm pretty sure legally they do have to comply with those requests. And they haven't. They, they just ignore me every time. I really want to know what the fuck they think I did. <laughs> like, it seems so bizarre. You think about the people that get to have Reddit accounts. Do You think of some of the subreddits they've historically hosted, even recently. And, um, yeah, they I'm persona non grata. So, anyway... Obviously, when I have these burners, and I, again, I'm not going to lie to people. There's no point, no point in lying. When I have these burners, I'd give them stupid names like, you know, like fucking Reddit mod smell and fucking, you know, uh, all of that. And by the way, there were other people, probably from the rich cord. They were also making throwaways to like defend me or whatever. And these accounts would also have names similar to mine. <laughs> so, so, so what would end up happening is people would think they would identify somebody who like defends me as me whether it was me or not and they would look at the names and then this person who hated me was like oh look richard richard's uh you can spot a richard burner by the way he constructs the names and even though they weren't all me and he made one called exposing cretins and when he used because i like the word cretin it's great uh, and i don't say cretin like the americans do it is cretin and anyway so he started posting things about me and replying to the burners about me negatively so he was he was the anti richard lewis burner originally but somewhere along the line Living like Richard Lewis, he grew to love being Richard Lewis. And so now he defends me religiously. No joke. And he does it. And now people think it's me. <laughs> and maybe this is a double fake psyop and it is, but it isn't. Or is it? But it isn't. Right? This guy who started out as a hater now religiously defends me and everybody accuses that account of being me. And it's like, you know, I'd love to fucking talk to this guy. Like, what happened? What changed? Like, you thought I was a cunt. 
and now you fucking you're defending me. Every he's there. Every thread, by the way, exposing cretins. Every single thread, he's there defending my honor. I fucking love you, man. You like, I'd love to pick your brains. But yeah, he's on that fucking get down, Mr. President shit. He's fucking all up in it, man. He's in the he's in the trenches. This guy, and like I said, all of his replies. Nice burner, Richard. <laughs> It's fucking great. Oh, uh, it's too good, man. Uh, Richard, that's a win. Let's go. P6 seeing him again. Pull back in for CS2. Uh, I'm so excited for RL. Uh, the lineup is terrible. Yeah, well, you, know, you can't win them all. Goat commentator. That's, that's obviously the talent. Rich, Richard. Now I have to take the train there. 20 minutes of pure agony. So this person's coming to see me. Uh, hopefully a, a lover, not a hater. Uh, people who say RL shouldn't be allowed to host since he left the scene uh, uh, is wrong. He follows it a lot. One hour vids of RL hating Nip Astralis on YouTube. P sign me up. Then this guy. This guy keeps saying I beat up a minor backstage and he's a Dota fan. And so he knows who Loader is. You can see he's been doing this for about, I want to say, so it's been what, like eight years? I think since Hell in a Cell. So he's been doing it for eight years. He's a Dota fan. Uh, that actually knows who Loader is, is his Dota fan. And uh, look at this. Uh, Richard Lewis, the child beater. Right? He, 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 and, and the thing is, he always gets corrected, this nutcase. He always gets corrected. Uh, but then they then posts the same lie every single time. It's kind of wild, actually, that they, they do this. Because it's too much. You see, you had to, you could have just said, oh, he assaulted somebody and leave it vague. But the idea that, you know, like, listen, I can be disagreeable, but the idea that there was just a child, I don't know, <laughs> what are you looking at? Right? But then he, 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 go, he, goes, he goes so fucking deep into it, right, that he's like, uh, to be clear, uh, it isn't that I don't think people deserve redemption, it's that he spent big money to scrub the internet of the incident, oh yeah, that famously not known about totally scrubbed incident, that is dream hack hell in a cell, yeah, that never gets brought up, mate, fucking money well spent, money well spent on that fucking cover up, Right, so I've never spent money um, to have the article scrubbed. I think I sent a scathing email to a PC gamer. I think I was about as far as I ever went. So anyway, it's that he spent big money to scrub the internet of the incident and has never apologized to the kid he strangled backstage. It's why he's not allowed or wasn't in the past at ESL events, if I remember correctly. I mean, dude, it's your fantasy. <laughs> so fucking just don't don't say if I recall. You are fabricating it whole cloth. So just go fucking nuts. <laughs> Obviously, we all know Loda was 27 at the time. I mean, couldn't even be mistaken for a kid. Not only 27, but 27 and prematurely balding. <laughs> Horrifically. Like, the idea you could get his age wrong the, that way, as opposed to, oh, he's like, he's like 40. And he, <laughs> it's actually insane. <laughs> as if. Uh, it means he's also a hypocrite uh, when it comes to his Saudi Arabia journalism. Role model who strangled a minor backstage, scrubbed the internet of the incident, and has never apologized. That type of role model. And then somebody said, that's just not what happened. And he said, well, it might be a bit exaggerated. It's hard to tell when he spent so much money scrubbing the internet of articles back then about the incident. And more importantly, has never apologized to the kid. Gotta assume, since the kid never came out and talked about it, this fucker is bouncing off the walls, like... And it's not a bit. He does this every time. He does it every single time. It's actually mental. I see this guy in so many threads about me doing this. Uh, more importantly, he never apologized to the kid. Gotta assume since the kid's never come out and talked about it, he got paid some money to sign an NDA. Uh, <laughs> uh, then somebody should uh, link the police report from when he choked the miner backstage. Then he accuses someone of being a burner here. Dream Act 2015, Dota 2 tournament. Police report states he initiated physical contact. Hell, the PC Gamer article is still up. There is no police report. <laughs> Dream Hack said I initiated physical contact because they lied because uh, the big machine was at work and I had to get sacrificed on the altar of that. It's one of those things where it's like, 
I don't know. I don't know how much more obvious it can be that that's not true. I, I guess it's technically correct if you don't consider someone threatening you and invading your personal space and leaning their head into you. This sort of, if, if you don't consider that to be initiating physical contact, I mean, it actually would meet the definition of assault in some countries. But if you don't consider that to be initiating physical contact, then yes, I did do this. So it was terrible, terrible of me to do it. But anyway, I'll concede to the age aspect, Loder wasn't a minor. All other statements are true. And then somebody corrected him uh again and said it's not a minor why'd you keep saying this like almost all the details are lies and he said you're right that's on me i always forget about it until i reread the twit longer but he's like a lifelong dota fan you know loader is right and you know loader was in the incident so this is like an this is like dementia you might want to get it checked you know there was that there was uh what else uh because I, I i guess we'll sort of just pick out the um the the interesting ones now because as i said it was just really nice a lot of the feedback this is a weird one you've got to ask the question right how long uh, is it reasonable to hold on to a grudge for it's a very good question right some people say hold on to them to the bitter end some people say be woo saw let it go there's a buddhist saying holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting your enemies to die which you know there's a lot of truth in that by the way, but Buddhism did come out with some good shit. So how long is reasonable to um, hold on to a grievance? Well, I would say five years for me. <laughs> I think five, I think any, I think people generally change in five year increments. So it's an arbitrary number, but hear out my reasoning, right? I look back at like, you know, what's five years ago? Now, fucking hell, it's 2019, Christ. I'm nearly dead. The, the, the Zoom is all right. I've got one foot in the grave. Forget that. Uh, let's go back another five years, right? Let's talk about the difference between 2014 Richard Lewis and 2019, right? Was, that span of five years. I'm a very different person, man. Like, I, I can say that. Not like, not major shifts, like, in values, but... I'm a different person. I'm jaded in some areas. I wasn't, and I'm a bit more optimistic in some areas. I, I, I wasn't at that time. You know, I've been through the ringer. Like, five years is a fucking long time uh, in a person's development. And so I would postulate, I would put it to you, that if you hate somebody and you hold on to it for five years, the person you hate after five years isn't even the person you hated to begin with. I would argue they're fundamentally different. I think most people, five, I think five years, if you can't squash a beef, it has to be something heinous. It's got to be something really bad. Like, you know, I'm not saying, oh, you attempted to kill me, mate. Oh, I'm sorry, I was having a bad one. You know, not that, right? You know, like, you, know you remember when you kidnapped me? <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that, right? I'm not like, I'm not the fucking Dalai Lama, right? But, you know, I'm just saying. For some sort of beef, you know, it's like a bit silly, isn't it? Five years to go beyond that i saw the word i saw an unbelievable beef i saw somebody holding on to a grievance i didn't even remember i didn't even remember this happened and i'm not saying that like a street fighter m bison kind of way for me it was tuesday i'm not saying it like that i'm just i just didn't <laughs> I just didn't fucking remember it because it was so sort of inconsequential in the grand fucking scheme of things. But to this guy, it's everything. It's a 12-year beef. 12. 12 years. It is insane. He defended Chan Man V's botting in the early StarCraft 2 days because they were buddies and did a show together. I don't hate him or anything. Blood, 12 years a hater, a new fucking movie. This beef is fucking dry-aged. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Blood? Like, come on, right? And here's the mad thing about it. It is the most... Right, this is how much esports has changed, guys. So this was considered a drama in 2012. Right, let me, let me tell you what this was. Um, he says botting. Right? So you're you're immediately gonna think view bots. Oh no. Back <laughs> like Chan Man uh, is a super technical guy. Like Chris Chris was like a really fucking, you know, smart dude and was wasted in esports. He was a super you know, technical guy. And so anyway, 
when he first started the fucking podcasts that he did because you know he had shows before and filtered he did a hearthstone show I, I i can't remember what the hearthstone show was called but remember he used to be a hearthstone caster because the meme was sap chan man every time he came on the show and he had a hearthstone podcast and obviously he went on doing he did one called um climbing the ladder which i was on and anyway they didn't do well on reddit and this was at a time when reddit traffic was a make or break to a project value town see yes we're still here and it, it was a really good podcast if you like that uh, card game by the way and it, there wasn't any content like it. it had trump on it not donald although that that would have been great wouldn't it you know like back when back before he was the world's most evil racist <laughs> would have been you know would have been cool uh donald trump's thoughts on uh warlock you know well, you gotta do you gotta go lifestyle uh anyway i totally lost my train of thought with my own stupid broken brain um yeah it's, but zoo is out of control you gotta, gotta build a wall and keep the, the zoo decks out of ladder right so anyway you had to you had to get fucking clicks on reddit you had to get your up dudes and back in the day, the way the updutes worked, it might still be like this, but this is how it was. The first 10 updutes were the most important updutes. They were algorithmically manipulated to matter more. So basically, you got diminishing returns, but if you got 10 updutes with no down dutes, you were going straight to the motherfucking moon. It would turbocharge your content. If you got 10 down dutes and zero updutes, even if you then got another 50 updutes for a net updute, gain you wouldn't go as far up the front page that's how it used to work and so the secret source to manipulate reddit because it was such a shit website and they were like we're totally not like dig and our tos is sacrosanct don't ever link to it you're vote brigading somebody stop the vote you're a fucking internet forum do you think maybe you're taking this shit a bit too seriously but anyway so what chan man did he created a bunch of accounts, and this was the fucking joke, the running joke. He literally, I think he literally called them like Chan Man 1, Chan Man 2. <laughs> and he was, he would activate, he would deploy his fucking Reddit bot army, which were just these dead Reddit accounts that he'd fucking made to get those 10 up dudes, right? Anyway, somebody found the accounts and did a post, ironically, on Reddit that got lots of updutes and basically said, Chan Man is botting Reddit. This motherfucker had to come out and apologize. There was people saying, like, oh, I don't know if I could ever do a podcast with a fucking updute. This was a week of drama like it was a week of drama it was insane like i remember i remember him apologizing apologized privately to me and the reason this guy hates me was i said i think this is a bit fucking asinine <laughs> i really don't think this is a big deal not even in 2012 esports i think this just doesn't really matter and you'll be all right Let's just keep making the shows. And so when we did, a, we did a show, and because it was that kind of show, we always talked about shit that was going on. If we were ever in the headlines or ever in the drama, we brought that to the table and we had some fun with it, right? So we talked about it on air, and, he, and we were all laughing at him, going, am I talking to the real Chan Man now? And just fucking wrecking him. That, for me, is just banter, right? Who cares? Like, for real, who cares? By the way, I don't know if you know this. Reddit is the most astral turfed shithole website on the internet. It, there's an article just this fucking week about how they're just totally colluding with the FBI to get the extremist gamers that with such indicators as me, and humor you got a subliminal humor to normalize radical thoughts so it they, they've been they, by the way they, do you ever wonder how they keep the fucking lights on when they just burn through vc money and they can't even like redesign this old dog shit website in a oh, some old dog shit there's overdrive they can't even redesign this old dog shit website in such a fucking way that the users like they think giving you a fucking snoovatar is gonna make it 
What do you think they're doing? They're fucking selling your data. I'll also just point out everyone's favourite presidential candidate. It was her turn. My queen, Hillary Clinton. She literally publicly admitted, by the way, to running a pack, well, or rather having a pack run for her called Correct the Record, where they were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to employ people to use Reddit burners to say, Hillary Clinton good, Trump bad. She didn't fall over and get thrown into a van like a side of beef. Hillary's health is a conspiracy theory. And that was the fucking start, by the way, of Reddit becoming the AstroTurf shit. Oh, those people that ran them accounts, they took over r slash politics. It's fucking insufferable over there now. And Reddit know this because Hillary Clinton said they did this, right? Correct, the record said they did this and were doing this and were being paid to do this. And Reddit went, yeah, but we really like Hillary Clinton. She's a Democrat after all. So, you know, those TOS, that was sacrosanct for everybody else, including Richard Lewis, who can never have a fucking Reddit account. We're going to give Hillary this one. We're going to give it to the old Hill dog. There's too much at stake. So you have to you have to say Chan Man in 2012 basically was the blueprint for Hillary Clinton. It's his fault. And yet it was bad. I don't know. Anyway, the point being, it defended Chan Man V's botting in the early StarCraft 2 days because they were buddies and then did a show together. I don't hate him. Dude, to hold on to that for 12 years, you've got to hate me, blood. You must. You have to. Please tell me you hate me. Please tell me you you viscerally, vitriolically fucking despise me. You must. You must. This This wasn't even in my brain. I forgot it happened until I read this comment. And it was my life. <laughs> I forgot an aspect of my own life you remembered and have held on to for 12 years. And it's mine. They're my memories you're curating. How? How? So, anyway, I don't hate him or anything. And I honestly don't care. <laughs> but he's just an asshole. That's like standing by a friend in a silly online drama. That, come on, that's like the least asshole thing I've ever done. Done loads of asshole stuff. That's not one. Put it this way, I'm pretty confident, right, that if I die and Christy in heaven <laughs> is real and it's not somebody else, I'm in trouble if it is somebody else. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly in a good spot if it's Christy in heaven, to be fair. But let's say I go up to the gates and the ledger comes out, right? You know, fucking St. Peter. That's not going to be in there. I'll say it to him. St. Peter, you've held on to this for fucking... I mean, it'll probably be still be 12 years with my blood pressure and weight problems. But <laughs> you've held on to this for 13 years when I died next year. right? You held on to this for 30 years, St. Peter. The Chan Man stuff. Yeah, I'm afraid it's actually the fucking deal breaker. You know, fucking Jesus frowns upon that them Reddit updupes. Crazy. So, saw that. I couldn't believe it. I was floored, man. Then, obviously, right, this is just funny. You'll appreciate this, guys. Everyone on this stream is going to love it. You know I have this uh, running love affair with Dom Sacco, the journalist who runs Esports News UK. Uh, one of the reasons everyone thinks I am retired is because... He took an out of context, an out of context sentence, and sort of made it a headline. Because he, look, he's got to get them clicks. I, it's fine. He, he watches all my stuff. He's a good guy. He's a journalist. I am the patron saint of esports journalists, and I forgive you for the clickbait and forgive you for clickbait about me. And you've turned me into Vince, and Vince has got to rizzle, rizzle, dizzle his way out of being the back in the game guy, and now it's me, right? All of that because of Dom Sacco. You know when you've been saccoed. But I will say this. He does a great job running Esports UK. And I just loved the way he framed the story about me doing the major. Not because I'm in it, but because of what he also adds. Richard Lewis returns to the desk as part of the PGL Copenhagen Major 2024 talent lineup. He'll work alongside Shocks, Banks, Esports and others. Lol Bainlaw who previously contributed to some of Richard's videos, is also part of the PGL Major. Lol Bangor contributed. <laughs> He'll be fucking spewing when he sees that. He'll be fucking livid. He'll be livid. Contributed. You have to understand, when we'd have, like, fucking creative talks about, like, you know... The show, we would always have this running joke where he's like, um, you, you do know the fucking show is nothing without me, but I fucking turn up and I fucking laugh and fucking, fucking, that's what people want. They fucking want Sam. They want little Sammy, Sammy Binlaw. 
laughing. That's what they fucking want. So, you know, you better fucking pay me, boy. <laughs> right? He didn't really say that. Or did he? But, yeah, I mean, like, more than contributed. Like, I mean, you know, we were, he was a creative fucking partner. Like, we came up with the ideas, and there was that insane period where the Richard Lewis show was kind of swerving all over the road. Like, one minute, it's serious politics. <laughs> the next minute, it's like, I hate it here. Uh, the next minute, we're watching a fucking Dave OG Miles video. Like, <laughs> that, like, 2016, 2017 car crash, trash talk, Richard Lewis show combo. That was fucking... That's goated content. Like, I, I love in that period of my life like that was for me some of the most fun i ever had making content and i know like a lot of you were still around from those days and a lot of you weren't there i you know it's crazy like how fucking just funny how much fun it was to just turn up and do a stream and just have insane shit and just i'm listening to sam reacting to it and he's got a great community it was really good we should have done more of that we could have been a big podcast, I'm pretty sure. I always wanted to just make a podcast for me and Sam called Sleep Apnea, the Sleep Apnea podcast, right? And just leave everything else behind. But it just, it, it there's a timeline where that happens. Uh, and it's not this one, unfortunately. So, uh, but anyway, lol, Bane Law. <laughs> lol, Bane Law did do more than contribute he was like he was what the fucking he was a writing partner essentially for all of the stuff so you know got to give him his due and obviously now he is a sort of uh video producer he's a live video producer cs observing he just knocks that out of the park super easy for him i'm sure he's got a bright future in and out of esports because you know he's always been a smart guy and good at what he does and dedicated and he just likes to do his thing away from the spotlight and, you know, that's that. And I'll just end with, like, look, on Twitter, Loba lit me up. And, you know, listen, I don't... I, one of the things people say about me, and it's just not true, they say, like, oh, my Twitter is so bad now. There was, like, people in that other thread. I'm not going to bore you with it, because, again, it's, like, overwhelmingly positive for a change. So like, what the fuck happened? But uh, they say, oh, is, uh, is, is, is Twitter is uh, terrible. And um, he posts all this, like manosphere stuff but um anyway they say like my twitter's bad and i just post my content now i, I only really argue with the melt if i'm super bored there's just no point and i never take pot shots at people isn't i i learned that that is a fucking that is a zero sum game dude it's like you know some people feel compelled to do it like we all have to do these rituals if someone in esports does a bad thing or if someone says a silly thing or you know if there's a, everyone's got a chip in and it's just like i don't know it just makes it not a fun industry i used to do it all the time i don't do it now i actually think my twitter's pretty fucking benign and boring but i che i did clap back today cuz you know look you have to set some boundaries and obviously Loba, he's got me blocked. He's blocked me, and I can't see his tweets. But uh, somebody like added me in it, and then I realised I was blocked, and then I got the link, and then I read it in a uh, uh, browser, you know, where you're anonymous. And I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. So uh, you can see from the the tweet, uh, he says. So the guy that said he is quitting CS and won't be involved anymore has been non-stop making CS videos since then. Uh, which, by the way, I never said I was not making videos. And now just got his first event offer and instantly accepted. Interesting. Crying with laughter, right? As I said earlier, right, Loba is sort of missed. It's not my first. Um, I've even worked uh, events, after, I think. I think I did, like, uh, a couple. I think I did a couple of small events. Maybe since I said I was quitting. I can't remember when I fucking said it, to be honest, mate. The irony of the cave troll posting this shouldn't be lost on anyone. Not only has he made his whole identity hating on a game that he streams, but he also applies to be co-streamer of the esports tournaments for that game. Curious. Now, it is kind of curious, isn't it? Because he hates CS2. We've established that, right? Uh, one of the f best things uh that probably has ever been created i um, i don't know who made it on the rich cord but there's a user called foreign gamer and he posts it every time loba comes up and i want to say more power to your brother i want to say keep doing god's work this is 
Uh, probably, I, I assume we made it on the rich chord. It, it's got all the hallmarks of it being rich chord, a rich chord meme. But as you can see, whenever the matter of Loba gets brought up, uh, Foreign Gamer posts uh, this. And you can see uh, it's a picture of Loba. He's crying uh, to the point <laughs> where there's tears of blood uh, streaming uh, down his face. Um, he has a fuck valve tattoo just above his uh, penis bones thing where it goes down. I don't even know what they call. I haven't seen. I haven't had one of them in a decade. So you know, whatever they are. One hundred and twenty-eight tick tattooed here, and face it tattooed there, and he's got a pen a penis tattoo there. That's meant to be a knob, I think, and it's just brilliant. I really want this meme to spread <laughs> so fucking i i love this one whoever made this on the rich card you you are knighted please save this uh for when you need it for when you need it the most uh but anyway i you know i i did a little clap back some people thought this was funny i said um to be fair to him i don't think he was ever the same after losing the battle in the Mines of Moria, and you can see, now you understand the whole Daywalker me. Because <laughs> it's pretty wild, isn't it, when you think about it. And somebody else got another, I'm guessing another rich core denizen. We do have the, we have the best meme creators. The memeologists on the rich core are on another fucking planet, to be fair. And this guy immediately ran with the, ran with the football. Got straight to the end zone with this. Loba's FPL opponents, they have a cave troll, and there he is. It's that moment when Boromir sticks his fucking head through the door and sees it. They have a cave That's fucking straight fire. He took, he took the foundational work that I laid and then just elevated it. It's like Gordon Ramsay, you know. And at the end, you just add some chopped coriander. Gives it that freshness. That's what you've done. You've added chopped coriander to my dish. So there was that. Anyway, there were some other Reddit comments that I, that I missed. Um, I did tell you about the one where they said Sam was my disabled son. Just to show you that was a real Reddit comment. You can see it there. The Dream Act Strangler has returned. And he even got his disabled son while paying Laura job as well. I mean, it's hard to tell whether they're a fight. Like, we we just we we've, we've stacked so many levels of irony on the rich uh, on the rich cord identity. It's hard to tell if it's a fan or a hater. I mean, I get lots of positive messages where it's just like they're so over familiar. <laughs> it's like really jarring because you think they're being rude at first, but they're you know, how oh, you doing, you fat bastard? <laughs> Oh, fucking hell, mate. I don't know you. Like, I mean, come on. They, but they just, they feel so comfortable. It's like as actually a sign, you know, that they uh, they do like you. You know, you just got to not reflexively um, kind of react to it. So there was that. Then this is just brilliant. I just fucking love this. This is the, the Richard Lewis paradigm kind of in a nutshell, right? Like, as you can see, uh, I am boycotting the major and I advise you guys to follow suit. And Jester who is uh, a rich called denizen says why he is a right-wing extremist on his twitter and podcast can anyone link me to the right-wing extremist podcast that i do and why is he listening to it if it is if it's real <laughs> why is he like listen i despise this right-wing extremist ideology but uh you know i'm just gonna keep listening to it because uh you know, you got to keep tabs on them, don't you? Got to keep tabs. Then Jester replied with, can you give me a link to any evidence of that claim? And the response was, I blocked you now, FYI. <laughs> it's just too perfect. Like, it's just the fucking perfect. Every hater ever, actually. Every hater ever. Like, just a simple question. Can you, can you prove the right wing? claims and then somebody else r r r replied uh saying can you please show me uh how the openly uh, by man we shouldn't be alt right somebody else said hi political expert here richard is center left much love <laughs> probably accurate he has has got me so there was that as well boycotting the major uh because a right-wing extremist has been hired so i've got to say uh ultimately uh, a happy day 
you know, getting hired, getting back in the game, uh, travel out there in a few days, and uh, looking forward to doing a show, and hopefully um, it's just going to be good, but I'm just going to be, as I said, I'm going to be woosah, and we'll try and have some fun, which is the key thing, it's me it's video games, it's meant to be fun, right? But yeah, I've got a, just a little, the only disappointing thing, man, like, it just didn't break everyone's brains, and I was just kind of really hoping for that, I really just wanted, ah, oh, wanted more screeching, <laughs> is it stupid? It is, but I just wanted more screeching, just a little bit more screeching, and in the end, they they saw everyone just sort of shrugged and reluctantly went, yeah, okay then. He's he's all right.